Next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 1890 in the name of Jackie Bailey on supporting women-led businesses in Global Entrepreneurship Week. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. You're anxious, you're on your feet before I've been called you, don't blame you. <laughs> uh, with those members who wish to speak, press the request to speak buttons now. I now call on Jackie Bailey to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Ms Bailey. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It gives me great pleasure to open this debate about the importance of women in enterprise during what is Global Entrepreneurship Week. This annual event is about getting more people involved in thinking about setting up in business. And tomorrow, there is a specific focus on women's entrepreneurship, aptly named Women's Wednesday. But our ambition should be to have the focus on women's enterprise every day of the week and not just one. And let me start by paying tribute to the work of Women's Enterprise Scotland. Working together with their partners, WES has ensured that Scotland is leading Europe on a best practice approach to women's enterprise. WES is celebrating their, this week by bringing together their ambassadors who come from all sorts of different businesses and backgrounds. They act as really encouraging role models for women starting out in business. The knowledge that someone has done it already, faced barriers but has overcome them, is actually very empowering indeed. And I very much welcome a lot of the ambassadors to the public gallery this evening. We will be moving to a cross-party group meeting on women's enterprise convened by my colleague Gillian Martin after this debate, and I would invite any members who are free to come along and learn. The contribution of women-led businesses to the Scottish economy is significant, but it could be even more substantial. While women represent 51% of the population, just 20% of businesses are majority owned by women. The OECD average is 30%, so we are lagging well behind. And less than 2% of UK working women are business owners compared to the OECD average of 10%. Those stats are clearly not great. And it is the case that the number of women-led small and medium-sized businesses has fallen from 22% to 20% since the Scottish Government were elected in 2007. Now, we all share an ambition to increase the number of women-led business, but what this demonstrates for me is that we need to get beyond the warm words and take substantive action. Women are underrepresented in many of the growth sectors targeted by Scottish Enterprise. Take the results from research carried out in 2013, which sought to identify the number of female managing directors or CEOs in companies with a turnover of more than 5.6 million or with 250 plus employees. Of the 5,230 companies that fit that category, only 1% were led by women, just 1%. Of that number, 408 were account managed by Scottish Enterprise, and that's good. But only 3% of these were female led, just 3%. That shows what huge distance we still need to travel. But it also shows, presiding officer, that there is a huge opportunity here. We know that women-led businesses contribute at least £5 billion in gross value added every year to the Scottish economy. If women-led businesses equaled those of men, the contribution to Scotland's GVA would increase by £7.6 billion, taking it to £13 billion each year. That's more than a 5% increase in the size of the Scottish economy. It is truly staggering. So there is such potential to grow our economy, but we need to do much more to encourage this to happen. We have a strategic framework for women's enterprise in Scotland, and you know there is very little in it that I would disagree with. But where is the action? Where is the resource required to make it real? We need a step change in effort if we are to create opportunities to grow women's enterprise and unlock this potential. The Scottish enterprise figure shouldn't make for comfortable reading. It's an illustration of gender blindness in policy making. Focus is placed on high growth companies and women specific growth support is not provided because they don't meet the thresholds. So they're largely excluded from growth support. Yet we know 
that women's businesses are different. There are different skills, different experiences, slower, but often more sustainable growth. Yet we don't recognise that difference in the type of support we then go on to provide. So let me offer the Minister some food for thought. Let's make sure that there is an understanding of the difference. All SE and HIE account managers should be given gender appropriate training that reflects the differing nature of women's enterprise. Let's do that for business gateway advisors as well. Do you know, there are some really good examples of best practice across the country, but it's not standard. It should be happening everywhere. Let's also start collecting stats. I had a debate with Eddie on Call K this morning. It was fascinating. Um, I hope not to ever debate with him again, because he accused me of making up the stats, sitting at my desk and twiddling the figures somehow. But you know, stats aren't optional. They're not a voluntary thing. I don't make them up. But if we are serious and mean business, we need to know about women's enterprise, the number and nature of businesses, what helps them start up, what helps them to grow. And at the moment, we don't really bother to count this in a systematic way. Even the Scottish Government's own publication, Business in Scotland, simply fails to disaggregate the data by gender, so we don't know how many are women-led. So much more to do at a local level with Business Gateway, at a national level with SE and High, and yes, the Scottish Government too. Let's identify what matters and then measure it, because only then will you know if you are succeeding. Let's set a target against which the enterprise agencies and government will be held accountable, because that will focus attention. And finally, let's have more gender-appropriate services. Let's review the existing approach, remove the barriers to women setting up in business, because there is a clear need to mainstream a gender-sensitive approach in all entrepreneurship and growth policies so that we meet the specific characteristics, needs and challenges of women setting up in business. And let me remind you, presiding officer, why it's so important. We could grow our economy by a staggering 5%. More growth, more jobs, more revenue through taxes for our public services. At a time of economic uncertainty, slowing growth and public sector cuts, what's not to like about this? I urge the minister to work with Women's Enterprise Scotland, local government and the enterprise agencies in devising that much more focused approach. We don't need more pilot projects. We don't need little announcements of small amounts of money. What we need is a step change in policy and resourcing. This needs to be mainstream, not just added on. And finally, presiding officer, because it is only when you do that and encourage more women into business that you will unlock the potential for our economy. And that potential, quite simply, is huge. Yes, I do enjoy your finally, finally, Ms. Bailey. I call Julian Martin to be followed by Annie Wells. Uh, Ms. Martin, four minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. If there's one number you remember after listening to our contributions, then make it this one. Six, sorry, seven. Is, your, mic six. is your microphone up, Ms. Yeah. Martin? It is. It is. There we are. Right. That number is. 7.6 billion. That's how many pounds will go into the Scottish economy if the same amount of women as men started up in business every year. How many jobs would be created if this were achieved? How much income tax would be generated? How many of those businesses might go on to be operating globally? And how many girls would be encouraged by looking at that changed landscape? But the big question is, why is there still a stubborn gender enterprise gap? And what are we doing to close that gap and maximise our economic potential, both globally and nationally. I've only four minutes, so I'll focus on just two reasons. Gender blindness in business support and endemic discriminatory, discriminatory attitudes in the business world. The Federation of Small Businesses found that over a third of women business owners had experienced discrimination as a businesswoman. Instances in which their role in the business was mistaken or an assumption made that a male employee was the business owner were common. A Glasgow businesswoman that I know runs two very successful bars in the city with her husband and she told me of continued instances where suppliers would automatically presume it was her husband they should speak to with regard to business decisions. I have to tell you one incredible instance of this woman and her husband visiting a brewery as potential clients. On arrival, the brewery manager suggested to her husband that, quote, your wife might like to have a browse in the gift shop while we have our meeting. Is it any wonder he lost out in their business? 
Clearly, we have work to do before attitudes like this are a thing of the past. And what better way of tackling those attitudes than ensuring enterprises full of strong, successful women? Research and feedback continues to also highlight the issue and the impact of structural discrimination for women-led businesses as they look to access enterprise support, which has been mentioned by Ms Bailey. She mentioned that only 3% of Scottish enterprise-managed accounts are female-led, and criticism is focused on the narrow parameters of the criteria on which the support is allocated. When it comes to talking about their success, research shows that women are more modest and less likely to say their business is prospering, even when they're reporting higher profits than their male counterparts. Turnover is not their only priority. Women-led businesses view growth as a sustainable process rather than a fast, high trajectory and focus on broader community measures such as employment, fair working practices, quality of service and product rather than just turnover. 78% of respondents to the Women Enterprise Scotland survey stated that services should be more aware of the differences in support needs between women and men in business with appropriate peer support has been listed as being particularly desirable. So today I too welcome to the Parliament two groups of incredible women entrepreneurs, some of whom are in the public gallery right now. We have business ambassadors from Women Enterprise Scotland who are playing a vital role in mentoring other women starting out in or growing their business. And tonight, in the cross-party group I convene on Women in Enterprise, we will hear from wives and partners of servicemen who have just completed the first Women Enterprise Scotland business creation course at Glencourse Barracks. In just 10 weeks, trading businesses have been started by women who were previously economic, economically inactive. I would encourage those mainstream business support agencies to look at how these successful support programmes have worked and be open to adopting some of their innovative mentoring strategies. Because global entrepreneurship doesn't happen without the right kind of support. And if we still have a gender enterprise gap in 2016, we must look again at how we nurture the seedlings of small businesses run by women so that the female global entrepreneurs of the future get the best possible chance of being discovered. Thank you very much. I call Annie Wells to be followed by Kezia Dugdale. Ms Wells, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I want to echo the sentiments from the Chamber today regarding the great work of Women's Enterprise Scotland and the Association of Scottish Businesswomen in supporting women into business and thank Gillian Martin for setting up the newly formed CPG on Women in Enterprise. Women play a pivotal role in the economy across the UK and those businesses led by women contribute billions to the economy. Since 2010, there has been an increase of about 170,000 small and medium-sized enterprises or SMEs in the UK and these businesses contributed around £85 billion per year in JVA to the UK non-financial business economy. Real progress has been made that we now have the highest number of women in work on record and there are no longer any male-only boards in the FTSE 100. However, I am under no illusion that more needs to be done by both the UK and Scottish governments. There is widespread consensus that a better gender balance would benefit our economy, and as Jackie Bailey has rightly pointed out, if there was equal participation of women in business, the contribution of Scotland's GVA could increase by as much as 5.5 billion. Further analysis shows that only 31% of women feel they have the skills to start a business, compared to nearly half of men. And nearly 50% of women, as compared with under 40% of men, say that they fear of, the fear of failure would stop them from starting a business. What then would improve this situation and constitute a gender appropriate approach to all enterprise and growth policies? It should not be the case that women have to choose between a successful career and having a baby. They should always be able to pursue their goals. That is why I welcome the Scottish Government's plan to raise the number of childcare hours to 30 hours a week in line with the UK changes, as well as a later commitment to a more flexible system. I also welcome the UK Government's introduction of a new shared parental leave scheme benefiting mothers in Scotland. However, encouraging women into business also depends, as we have seen by the figures, on the advice and support that is on offer, as well as the wider message given to women that they are capable of starting their own business. A survey of women-owned businesses in 2014 found that mentoring was popular 
uh, a popular choice among respondents. Nearly a quarter stated that they would like a mentor in the future, and those that had been mentored, 90% said they felt it had been helpful. Women's Enterprise Scotland has been instrumental in that regard, championing gender-specific enterprise support and a network in which women can collaborate and communicate. In the region I represent in Glasgow, I was pleased to see the work of Scottish Women in Business, a charity organisation which holds monthly networking events that allows women to meet and do business. I was also encouraged last year to see that the UK Government's announcement of £50,000 of funding to create networking opportunities for women in business through its Meet a Mentor scheme. The example of Monica Coyle, who after attending a Meet the Mentor meeting in Glasgow earlier this year, went on to start her own fledgling enterprise, Positive Pulse Scotland, has shown that these methods work and I welcome any continued initiatives in that regard. If we are to see the equalisation of women in business, we should be bold in our approach. Of course, I welcome the record number of women in business, but I echo the sentiments of those in the Chamber today and that of Jackie Bailey's motion and that much more needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Kezia Dugdale to be followed by Ivor McKee. Ms Dugdale, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. And can I congratulate Jackie Bailey on securing this debate this afternoon and pay tribute to her efforts in this field. I also want to pay tribute to another group of people, and I never thought that I would do this in this chamber or indeed in my political life, and that is pay tribute to the bankers. So if it, the Chamber will let me explain myself over the next few minutes, that would be uh, very, very grateful to them for that. Not just any bankers, but particularly the Royal Bank of Scotland, who in particular are the market leaders when it comes to supporting women in business. Uh, RBS actually have 400 women in business specialists across the whole of the United Kingdom working with female entrepreneurs uh, every single day. And they've actually produced a report in their most recent uh, entrepreneurship monitor just to talk about the differences between the type of support that women and men uh, need when they're in business. And they do caution us by saying these are small differences, but they're consistent throughout all the times that they've done this monitoring report. The types of reasons why women might be less likely to go into business as opposed to men are a fear of failure. They're more likely to think that from the offset that they're going to fail. They worry more about finding startup money in the first place to take that leap into business. They worry more generally about the economic situation facing their country. And they also worry more than men about their own skill set, the abilities that they may or may not have to take that leap into business. When you also start to examine the type of businesses uh, that they set up and also what success looks like to them, the measures of success are different for women than for men. So women tend to be far more interested in producing a quality brand, presiding officer, where surprisingly the men are more interested in making a quick buck. So there are substantial changes and differences in that. And the conclusion is I think you're upsetting Mr. Leonard there. <laughs> <laughs> The conclusions, that, the conclusions that I would seek to, to draw from that, uh, presiding officer, is that women don't face any greater challenges than men necessarily to access business. They face different challenges. And any economic strategy that a government uh, should be arguing for needs to cater for these differing needs. And if you end up with an economic strategy which is classically uh, determined towards those needs of men, then of course you're going to lose out uh, on the opportunity of women stepping into business for the first time. And as other speakers have mentioned, this is an economic imperative for us all to overcome these barriers because of the potential economic growth that could come from it. The figure that's mentioned in the RBS report is a potential £60 billion pounds worth of uh, additional revenue for the UK economy, which we all know would be critical to our own public services. There are two reasons why I wanted to thank the bankers. One was just uh, RBS's commitment to doing this work and identifying those reasons from their own experience. The second is the money that uh, RBS put directly into Entrepreneurial Spark, which members across the chamber may be uh, familiar with, which is direct help to support not just women, but uh, everybody in terms of taking that leap into business. I've had the great pleasure of visiting Entrepreneurial Spark in Brighton, uh, in Glasgow, and just yesterday in Edinburgh, uh, in my home city. And I was really struck by the fantastic work that's taken place there. They also have done an evaluation of their own work, presiding officer, and it's very interesting that the average age of a woman uh, who accesses Entrepreneurial Spark is 30. 
and the average age of a man is 52. And when I asked them to perhaps explore some of those reasons why, uh, the reality was that the type of women who would use entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spark uh, would be those returning after a period looking after their kids, uh, returning to work full stop, whereas for men it was a change in career. Something happened in their life, a crisis point, which meant maybe they'd left the army or a service and they were then seeking to uh, access business from that perspective. I met five inspirational women yesterday, presiding officer, one of them setting up an urban dance company, somebody else is providing social media experts expertise for Edinburgh Airport through their own company. One has set up a marketing agency to pitch for major events to bring to Scotland. Another one is developing 21st century harnesses for children. And another one has, uh, another two women in fact, have set up a healthy chocolate factory. If women could achieve anything in this world, chocolate that is good for you is happening in Stirling right now. And I've made a personal commitment to all these five women. I'll do what I can to support them in business. Though the chances are I'm far more likely to get to the chocolate factory than I am to the breakdancing session any time soon. So just to conclude uh, that the lessons from that experience, presiding officer, it was clear to me that to help women uh, succeed in business, what we need is a combination of collaboration and environments like Entrepreneurial Spark that help women overcome those barriers. They're not any greater than anyone else's, they are just different. And we need an economic strategy that recognises that. Uh, thank you. I think the breaking news will be healthy chocolate, Ms. Doug Daling. That's all we'll remember from your speech. Uh, now call uh, Ivan McKee to be followed by Alison Harris. Mr. McKee, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, and I thank Jackie Bailey for bringing uh, this debate to the Parliament and allowing us the opportunity to explore the important issues it raises. Scotland in general needs to be more enterprising. We suffer from a lack of startup businesses, a problem that's decades old, but hopefully where we're now starting to see some advances in recent years. Fixing this requires a combination of changes in attitudes and in policy. And in some sectors of society, we're further to travel than in others. We see it in a lack of aspiration across many of our most deprived communities. We see it in low levels of business activity across marginalised groups in society. And we see it in the stark contrast in business startup rates and other key economic metrics between genders. And it's on this enterprise gender gap that we focus today. The motion mentions some numbers taken from Women's Enterprise Scotland framework document from 2012. If women started business, as we've heard, at the same rate as men, this would add another seven billion to the gross value add of Scotland's economy, a useful 5% boost to the growth rate. However, I believe the size of the prize is potentially far, far greater. The culture of doing business is contagious. Embedding it transforms attitudes and performance. Creating more women-led businesses would lead to the creation of more men-led businesses and jointly-led businesses too. This isn't a zero-sum game. Business startup requires creativity, seeing opportunities where others don't and figuring out new ways of meeting demand. Women often bring a different perspective to problems, a different appreciation of market needs and a different understanding of how to successfully satisfy them. We can't afford not to engage the innovative talents of half of the population. In my own constituency, the East End Networks Connection meets on a monthly basis at Drygate, promoting all kinds of businesses locally and ably led by Fiona Colburn Brown, showing that women can not only start and lead businesses, they can and should enable the structures that help those businesses to grow. Women are often great networkers, a key element of business growth and success. Women's Enterprise Scotland, the organisation leading the way on this issue, makes some simple rep recommendations to support and encourage more women-led businesses to start up. Gender balanced uh, panels and role models, appropriate language, tone and image in literature and advertising, utilising promotion through existing networks to ensure good gender balance at events. Challenging gender stereotypical attitudes that restrict the start-up and growth of women-led businesses will deliver benefits, not only here, but in other areas of the economy where gender imbalance is marked. The pay gap is one of the most significant of those, and the need for more women in senior positions across the private, public and third sectors is another. The issue of homework balance, including childcare responsibilities, is correctly identified as a major barrier to women-led enterprises. A recent Scottish Government report on the gender pay gap highlights underlying drivers that work against more women in business. One of the most significant being persistent attitudes towards stereotypical roles of women and men at home and in the workplace. A view across society that is preferable for women rather than men to take on more of the work disruption associated with having a family. Family friendly structures are often mentioned as having a role to play in enabling women to play more of an active economic role. 
but we will only make the huge strides we need to make to equalise women's participation in business when we tackle the societal norms regarding gender stereotypical roles. More women in business and more dads looking after the kids are two sides of the same coin. Shared parenting is a key driver of gender balance in the economy. To conclude, presiding officer, the appetite for growth is there. 87% of women-led businesses want to grow. We need those businesses to thrive, to support our economy and to enable the women who lead them and many others who will follow in their wake the opportunity to realise their potential and contribute to Scotland's economy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Alison Harris, the last speaker in the open debate. Ms Harris, please. Thank you. Deputy Presiding Officer, can I thank Jackie Bailey for initiating this important debate and say that as a woman who in a previous life ran my own business, I'm delighted to contribute. Don't take a job, make a job. Most people across the UK are following this maxim as they see self-employment as offering challenges and hopefully the prospect of good rewards. Unfortunately, still too few of this number are in Scotland and fewer still are women, with men still twice as likely as women to start up businesses. Indeed, with only 21% of Scotland's small and medium-sized businesses being solely led by women, there is a continued need to encourage a high level of business startups from women and in particular from young women and those from minority backgrounds. The headline figures indicate that over 70,000 Scots women are registered business owners and almost 100,000 are self-employed. These businesses contribute a minimum of five billion to the Scottish economy. However, the numbers involved are proportionately lower than in most other high income countries and it has, still, has it been estimated that if the rates of business startups between men and women were equal, then a further 100,000 businesses would be established in Scotland. Indeed, with the Scottish Government figures showing that a decline in the number of new Scottish businesses, whilst it is still rising rapidly across the rest of the UK, the contribution that women can make to boost business startups is more vital than ever. Scotland has 210 small businesses per 10,000 of the population, much less than the rest of the UK, and employment in Scotland is far more reliant on larger companies. Businesses drive growth in the economy and women can play an important part in bridging the shortfall of business startups in Scotland. Women already in business relish the challenges, independence, rewards and some flexibility in working hours, particularly for childcare arrangements as positive reasons for having taken the plunge. The ability to adapt to the range of skills necessary to run a successful business come readily to women as it, as it does obviously to men. Running a budget, dealing with the issues and problems as they arise, administrative work, thinking for the longer term and the ability of dealing with the inevitable setbacks are values known well to most women. Multitasking. Some skills are within individuals, some can be learnt, but the framework for running a successful business is heavily influenced by others. That is why we need to foster a true spirit of enterprise in Scotland for everyone and from every background. And all governments need to play a part in this. Westminster, Scottish Government and local governments. Make setting up businesses easier with less red tape, less form filling and less by also keeping taxes as low as possible. The importance of suitable childcare provision is one that we have discussed recently, but also councils and others need to ensure that they can provide the right mix of retail and commercial units suitable for start-ups. Deputy Presiding Officer, over, the two, over two years ago, the Framework and Action Plan for Women's Enterprises was published. By and large, a good document which recognised the need to increase entrepreneurship, if not the route to get there. But a document that needs to do more to put the vision into action and not just to be yet another document from the Scottish Government left to gather dust. The Scottish Government's encouragement and support for people to set up their own businesses must be by action, not words. Happily, there are excellent groups promoting women in business. Excuse me. The Association of Scottish Businesswomen offer great support and networking to both women starting up businesses and to more established enterprises. They give encouragement through their awards scheme. And at this point, can I congratulate Dorothy Henk of Fourth Valley Chamber of Commerce in Falkirk for being named as one of the winners of the 2016 Women of Inspiration Awards. Many other groups also do great work in enabling the enterprise and creativity of women. 
I commend them all and once again thank Jackie Bailey for raising this topic. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll call on Jamie Hepburn to wind up the Government Minister. Seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, uh, President Officer. Can I begin by thanking uh, Jackie Bailey for uh, bringing forward uh, this evening's debate. I think it's particularly appropriate, as she set out at the outset, uh, given it is uh, this week Global Entrepreneurship. Uh, we can thank uh, members for their uh, contribution. It is a, an opportunity for me to outline the commitment of uh, this Government, uh, the, gov the commitment we've made and continues to make to supporting women in business. Like others, I absolutely welcome the role of Women's Enterprise Scotland as a, a vital role, it's an important role. Let me readily respond to Jackie Whaley's very generous invitation to uh, work with uh, Women's Enterprise Scotland. I'll be very happy uh, to do so. And indeed, I can confirm to her I, I met with, uh, with Women's Enterprise Scotland earlier uh, today. I, I was uh, very pleased to meet uh, some of their ambassadors earlier today during one of their sessions at Edinburgh City Chambers and uh, like others can I welcome some of the ambassadors to uh, the public gallery uh, this evening. When I, I met them uh, earlier today I was interested to hear about the, the two-day training programme that they are undertaking which will uh, give uh, them additional skills and experience to help other women to start businesses and I, I, I look forward to, to hearing more about their first day in Edinburgh when I joined the cross-party group in Women in Enterprise uh, later this evening, uh, I should say, in case Ms Bailey wonders where I am, uh, is after I have first attended the reception uh, with the Construction Industry uh, Training Board. And in that regard, I should thank uh, Jilly Martin and indeed other uh, members for getting the cross-party group up and running. It is a, a group I'll be very happy to continue engaging with over uh, my uh, time in post. Uh, the Scottish Government is uh, committed to increasing uh, the number of women in business. The latest statistics show a 35 per cent increase in the number of women who are self-employed since uh, this government came to office. This is the highest since records uh, began. Let me say I would uh, recognise, though, that those are figures we would need to get underneath the skin of. It will not entirely uh, be driven by uh, the desire for women to uh, take forward their own uh, enter entrepreneurial activity. But, of course, many of those in those uh, figures will have been driven by such a desire. I agree absolutely with the point that Jackie Bailey uh, made. There is uh, much room, considerable room, for movement in a, a positive trajectory. Uh, we are uh, behind other uh, comparative uh, nations, and clearly we need to do much better in that regard, not least for uh, the very important principle of seeing greater equality in uh, the labour mar market, to which I'll uh, attempt to turn. If, uh, in some more detail, if time allows. But I think also the point was well made by a number of uh, members, uh, Jackie Bailey and Kezia Dugdale uh, and others, uh, around the fact that, of course, the economy uh, could be boosted significantly if there were as many uh, female-led businesses as those led uh, by men, uh, which uh, would self-evidently be good for our economy, but, of course, uh, there would be benefits to public revenues uh, as well. So I was very pleased when I met with the ambassadors earlier today during that meeting to be able to announce further funding of £200,000 to support female entrepreneurship. This funding will support the Women in Enterprise Ambassadors Programme, recognising the central importance of the role of mentoring that Annie Wells set out. We will support Investing Women, a project to help female-led businesses to become investment ready and bring them together with female investors will support Women Enterprise Scotland to work with uh, partners across our enterprise agencies to deliver a report on the best practice toward, towards tackling the gender gap within enterprise. It will support the Scottish Chambers of Commerce to develop and pilot a new Women's Enterprise Accelerator programme to work with women leading small businesses. Ms Bailey seems itching to get in. I, I, we both detected that. Girl, Ms please. Bailey. Thank you very much to the, the Minister for allowing me to do so. Um, you know, I, I recognise that the £200,000 is welcome. It's a continuation of the funding that was already in place. But does he not agree with me that in order to create the step change that I know he wants to create, we need to do an awful lot better than that? Uh, Minister. Uh, indeed, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to have uh, facilitated the opportunity to allow uh, to facilitate Ms Bailey's desperation to intervene on me, I should say. But you know, I think I set that out at the outset of my, my remarks, uh, Ms Bailey. I think there is, 
uh, considerably more uh, we uh, can do. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, earlier the positive contributions that members have made today and examples of how women and enterprises are supporting women in business, as is uh, frequently the case in uh, members' business debates, as should be the case. Uh, many members uh, highlighted uh, good practice in their own areas. Uh, Jackie Bailey also uh, mentioned the issue of uh, the statistics we collect. Uh, she, uh, unfortunately, I did not listen to Call K uh, this morning, uh, Ms Bailey, so I, I'm not uh, entirely au fait with her exchange with Eddie. She said she hopes never to have to debate with him again. I'm not sure how Eddie feels about uh, that in particular, but I would actually agree with the point that Ms Bailey makes about the quality of statistics, quality of data that we're collecting. That's why in the labour market strategy we've committed to improving the quality of data we gather. That's also uh, set out in the Enterprise and Skills Review. Having mentioned that uh, review, it will have to uh, look at all factors of supporting enterprises. I'll, I'll certainly take back the, the not unreasonable points that Ms Bailey has made about the role of our agencies in supporting uh, women in enterprise and make sure that's fed in to the next stage of the review. Uh, Kezia Dugdale uh, surprised us all, uh, not least with uh, her suggestion that chocolate is good for us, which is welcome news for us all. I can see particularly for you, uh, presiding officer, but also uh, in uh, her praise of... I, I missed her. that. Was that some kind of insult that I, flew past it, me? It, it was not an insult, presiding officer. I just heard you cheering merrily that uh, chocolate was uh, good for us, but uh, she mentioned uh, her praise for uh, bankers and the role uh, of RBS uh, being, I, I think, an important reflection of the critical role of businesses in uh, this agenda, uh, the role of those doing good work to talk about the benefits of, of uh, that for others to follow. Annie Wells and Alison Harris said that the importance of childcare. I would agree with that, although I would caution against the assumption that it always has to be predicated on the basis of supporting uh, women into the labour market and in relation to this agenda. I would recognise it is a uh, part of the agenda, but equally it has a role to play in supporting men into the labour market as well. And I think we need to be cautious about the type of language we engage in when we're talking about that agenda. But of course, work is underway to increase uh, hours of childcare provided and flexible uh, provision. As uh, ever, uh, President Officer, I see I'm uh, coming up against it in relation to the amount of time I have available uh, to uh, uh, respond to the uh, debate. But let me uh, say uh, I would recognise gender equality goes much wider than just uh, enterprise. It's a, a fundamental ambition of this Scottish Government to ensure that men and women have equal opportunities across employment and indeed in participation in the labour market. It's essential for our uh, potential as uh, a nation. I think it's a critical part of the a fair work agenda that we're taking for. That's taking uh, forward through the Fair Work Convention. I was very uh, pleased to be able to set out in the labour market strategy some £500,000 for the uh, Fair Work Convention to ro seek to roll out their framework in workplaces uh, across uh, the country. It's also why I was uh, delighted to uh, announce funding for Equate Scotland for the Women's Returners Project, the first element of our Women Returners initiative. But clearly, and I would absolutely accept uh, the critical importance in uh, seeking fairness in our labour market for doing rather better than we are in relation to women in, in enterprise. There is no uh, single catch-all method of doing that, but I certainly believe with the support of organisations such as Women in Enterprise Scotland, who are not only recognising that organisations and businesses have a, a responsibility to behave ethically and support this agenda, but actually trumpeting that, uh, doing so can be good for business and our wider economy. I believe we can make the progress needed to support women into the world of enterprise. The cost of failure to do so will be too high, and the benefits, benefits of achieving such are too great for us not to seek to make that progress, President Officer. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes the debate, and I'll close this meeting.